So today's video is going to be one that I've been wanting to make for a while, and that is comparing an auto ranging multimeter to a manual ranging one. A lot of people may already have their preferences on this, but if you don't, we'll go through the pros and cons of each. We'll talk about auto ranging and manual ranging meters, and we'll just kind of throw some light on the subject. Also, right up front, I am pretty die hard on auto ranging meters. Um, I do know that there are some pros to the manual range, but honestly for me, I'm always going to reach for an auto range meter. So it took me a little while to actually find a manual ranging meter that I wanted to do this video with because I wanted a meter that was kind of comparable to another one that I had that wasn't a really cheap low quality meter. I mean you can find low quality manual ranging meters all over the place but to find a manual ranging one that can compare to say the Fluke 83 was actually a lot more difficult than I thought and in fact it was so hard that I kinda added that to one of the cons is that nowadays to find a full featured manual ranging meter and this one has temperature, capacitance, uh, frequency just is a, a pretty much full featured meter. It's really difficult to find a manual ranging meter, especially one with capacitance. It's not impossible, but when you compare it to how easy it is to find an auto ranging meter that's going to have your capacitance on it, it is more difficult. Now, I want everybody to keep in mind that this is not going to be a brand comparison you know this is not going to be fluke versus x tech these meters are comparable to each other in accuracy they're fairly close the main thing we're going to focus on is that the fluke is a auto range meter and the x tech is a manual ranging meter the x tech is a data logging meter the fluke is not none of that is going to be important in this video we're strictly going to talk about ease of use features that one may have that the other may not have because of the auto ranging versus the manual ranging and things like that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is often the argument that people who like manual ranging meters use. But that is the speed with which the meter is going to take measurements. And the reason that it's faster is because you've already told the meter what you're going to be measuring. So if you're going to be looking at, let's say, measuring the mains, well, either one of these meters can do that, but since we already know that we're going to be measuring about 120 volts because we are in America, then we can preset it to this range and it's not going to have to think about where it's at. The fluke will it's going to have to go through a couple of ranges, and we'll do that in a little while. But that is the number one pro of a manual ranging meter, is that it can deliver quicker measurements. All right, the second pro to a manual ranging meter is that they do often cost less than auto ranging meters. That's because there's a little bit less processing power, for lack of a better word, in a manual ranging meter. And so it, it often reflects that within the cost of it. Now, in all actuality, this x -Tech cost a little bit more than this 83 did. However, the 83 was actually bought as a non-working meter and I repaired it. The x -Tech is actually in really, really good condition. Since we've already got two points to manual ranging, let's talk a little bit about the auto ranging. And one of the really large deciding factors in using an auto range meter is that they're easy to use. They're very intuitive. You have volts AC and volts DC and I know that no matter what I'm measuring as long as I know AC or DC I can flick it to that I can put my probes on it and it's gonna find its own way. It's gonna read it. I'm not gonna have to sit and watch overload 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 until I find the right range so 
if you work with a lot of unknown voltages or unknown resistances or whatever, auto ranging is a lot more convenient. The time that you're going to spend searching through ranges on a manual ranging meter is going to be offset by the time that it takes this meter to find its own range. So that's a definite pro for the auto ranging meter. Another con of the manual ranging meter and kind of not really, I wouldn't say it's a pro towards the auto ranging, but as I was saying before, a lot of manual ranging meters aren't going to have the features you're looking for. And in fact, a lot of newer meters, if you're going to buy a new meter versus trying to find a used one, the manual ranging meters are actually really, really hard to find in, you know, by good quality manufacturers like Fluke or Bryman or Agilent or any of those other ones. You know, the, the higher end meters, a lot of those manufacturers are not really going to make manual ranging meters anymore. But if you're like me and you tend to buy the older type meters, that shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. Another thing about auto ranging meters, and the 83 doesn't have it, but meters like the 12B do, um, a lot of Fluke's uh, 110 series have them, but there is a um, Auto V, Auto Volts, um, Klein also has it by a different name. There's a few different little things, but it's basically a feature where whenever you put it on that setting, it can automatically find whether or not it's AC or DC and it'll auto range to the correct range to give you a measurement and that's really really good for especially for beginners who you know may not know exactly if they're going to be looking for something AC or DC but that's a feature that you'll get with some auto ranging meters but as far as I know there are no manual ranging meters that will have that. So let's go ahead and actually take a few measurements and just see kind of what the difference is between these things. Okay, so we've got the meters ready to take some measurements. And I got to say, I actually really do like this x tech with those really big clear digits on it. But I uh, have it hooked up to my power supply. We're looking for about 25 volts, which will force the auto range to actually think a little bit. And we're kind of just looking for response time here. So here we go. Wow, that actually looked really close. Let's do that again. It almost looked like the x tech may have actually been a little bit slower. I think it was. Wow. That, um... Is that a fail? Did I uh did I pick the wrong meter to try to do this comparison to? Let's um tell you what, let's try to dial the voltage down maybe to something under 20 and let's range down and uh I tell you what, let's give that another shot. really really close but I think that the fluke is actually winning that's uh well, it's not disappointing but that is definitely a little odd let's try some AC measurement and see if maybe the x tech can uh, win in that. Alright, so ready and let's go. The, the fluke was the clear, clear winner in that. Let's try again. Wow. Okay, so to be completely fair, I have actually swap the meters around and change the leads even 
to uh, just give each one an equal chance. So let's try this again. No, it is still the fluke. Maybe we should try a different meter. Okay, so we're going to give this a shot with the DMM870 to see if that makes any difference. And here we go. No. So the x tech is actually probably not going to be the best meter to, uh, to showcase this with. I have one more that I think I want to try in place of the DMM870 that should actually be slower than the x -Tech. Okay, so I have the Klein MM500 up here now, and this meter is one of those meters that is completely auto-ranging. It can do AC, DC. I'm not even sure if... Yeah. It, it won't even allow you to choose whether you're doing AC or DC. And it is notoriously slow on auto ranging. So let's try this one and see if the X Tech can beat it. Okay, so it can't beat it on AC. Let's try DC just to see. Let's try that again. That one was really close to call. Okay, so it looks like it does actually win on DC mode. Well, guys, I kind of feel like I need to uh, apologize to the manual ranging lovers out there, but it seems to me like auto ranging, even the older meters, I mean, when you try to compare a kind of apples to apple meter, auto ranging actually seems to win out on the number one pro of the manual range. The, now, I will give it that the manual range still does have a beat that most of the time you'll be able to find meters in much better condition with about an equivalent functionality for less money if you're willing to go manual range versus auto range. But I think I would like to take a minute to talk a little bit about kind of the best of both worlds, which is going to be something that a lot of your nicer meters are going to have. And that is going to be this range button here. This, for me, is a lifesaver a lot of times. Because there are some things that these meters will take a while to auto range. Like capacitors, things like that. And what happens, whenever you hit this range button, you have essentially turned an auto ranging meter into a manual range one. You are cycling through these ranges here and basically what's going to come down to is you're moving that decimal place which is exactly if you look at any manual ranging meter you notice that it'll move up by most of the time an order of magnitude times 10 so you'll have a 2, a 20, a 200 and then this one will jump to a thousand or it'll go down to 200 millivolts, which was 200 times 10, 2000, that's two volts too. So it's actually a order of magnitude larger on that too. But that's one of the reasons that I love fluke meters is because a lot of fluke meters have that. And it just, it makes it so much simpler for some things to be able to have that range dialed in ready to go because what happens with ranges on meters like you might be wondering well if I just leave it on the highest range all the time then it doesn't matter because it's gonna automatically know what it needs to know and while that's true what you lose and I'll try to demonstrate that, is your resolution. And resolution and accuracy go hand in hand. 
you can have a very accurate meter, but if the resolution on it is bad, then that accuracy gets you nowhere. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate the resolution that you get out of these manual ranging meters if you have it ranged too high. And we'll also show what happens when you range it too low. But right now I have it in a thousand volts range and I have my power supply. It is putting out, it reads 18.72 volts. Let's check it against the fluke just to make sure that we are getting a little bit more accurate reading than the power supply can tell me. So we are actually getting 18.76. And you can see that the fluke is reading two extra decimal places, which gives us that resolution, which is, like I said, goes hand in hand with accuracy. So let's see what happens when we range down. You see how we've gained that extra digit of resolution and now our reading has changed? That's why it's important on manual ranging meters to be in the correct range, not just in a range that will read the measurement, but one that is correct. And if we go down one more range, you can see now that we're actually in three and a half digit mode and we're getting a reading that is right on par with the Fluke 83. So what happens if we go down one more range to this two volt range? What is the meter gonna do? Let's find out. Very simple, it's not gonna blow your meter up it's not gonna destroy anything it's not gonna cause your accuracy to go out it's simply gonna read overload and that's how you know on these manual ranging meters if you're reading a measurement that you're not sure of that you should try going up a range and seeing if that resolves that issue but this is another con of manual ranging meters is that the time that you spend cycling through ranges to try to find the most accurate one that is not below the range of the measurement you're trying to take, that eats up a lot more time than any auto ranging meter will. Okay guys, so I guess we'll go ahead and conclude this video. I apologize again for the very unexpected outcome of the auto versus manual ranging. But I think it's very interesting and it does actually prove a very good point for the argument of auto ranging meters. And I'm by no means, just for the record, trying to say that manual ranging meters have no place in the electronics world. They can be very, very good meters for people that need them. And some people just prefer, even if it's out of nothing more than old school stubbornness some people prefer a manual ranging meter and I have absolutely no problem with them but given the preference I do prefer the auto range so that's it for today guys thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe share you know all the good stuff I really want to be one of the popular kids they got a special table in the cafeteria they'll let me sit at so be sure to tell all your friends about Bev's repair bench thank you